How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of FSI's PGA DFS Pick Show. I am your host, TK Nation 47 joined with John Cool 19 Here we have the RBC Heritage. Uh, it's kind of hard to come down after another Masters in the books. Uh, congratulations to Scotty Scheffler, um, the number one player in the world, played like the number one player in the world. Um, you know, we saw DJ do that in November, but man, what a run for Scotty. Oh, yeah. Just crazy, Yeah. Uh, Super awesome to watch him win again. Really humble guy. I think he's very likable. And uh, yeah. uh, I don't know. We could have a, a new superstar on our hands here as far as the PGA Tour goes. Uh, and just a handful of really a year ago, he was a rookie of the year. or I guess two years ago, him, him, and then Zalatoris. And now he's uh, looking at what being one of the elite golfers. So, uh, yeah, the, the best part of the Masters besides just uh, – um, the course and, and Tiger coming back was was the coverage between the app on TV everything I saw a million shots golf shots this mm -hmm. week and you just never get to see that on most PGA Tour events so huge shout out to the Masters specifically for the coverage that they offer for us fans absolutely I mean, I mean they kind of kept caught on with the Rory Morikawa pairing on Sunday and man that was a lot of fun to see before you oh, man. before you could get into Scheffler and Cam Smith's little duel down the stretch. We had, uh, we had that to follow. So, yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun, and we're gonna miss that kind of coverage, that app, that sweet app every uh, every <laughs> year. But now we're back to the regular old run of the mill, and um, we have the RBC Heritage. John, uh, let's dig into the course a little bit and what to expect this week. Yep, uh, you got it. So RBC Heritage. This is played in Hilton Head, South Carolina. We're actually just a pretty short trip from Augusta, Georgia. So a lot of guys kind of yeah. stick around regionally and play this. That's why the field is excellent um, because they yes. don't really have to travel very far. The course, this is Harbor Town Golf, Golf Links. It's a par 71, 70, 100 yards. So it's pretty darn short. Um, but that does not mean that the drivers, the long drivers have any kind of advantage here. They just don't. This is a less than driver course. You're going to see a lot of guys taking three wood off the tee uh, past one Winners are some golfers who you do not think about when you think of length, your Webb Simpsons, um, guys like that. Uh, and really the average age of the winner at this course uh, has Britain quite a bit older than the rest of the PGA Tour. So uh, think about that as you're building some DraftKings lineups as well. Uh, Bermuda grass greens, and this is a peat dye design. So if you're looking for some comp courses, certainly factor in uh, Pete Dye courses as well. We've been talking uh, before this video about Pebble Beach a bit. I'm looking at like Sea Island Resort as well, Sedgefield yeah, Country Club, some more courses that you can consider uh, when looking at some comp courses. Um, but I'm looking uh, at the stats this week. This is an approach, a second shot course uh, off the tee is not nearly as important as the approach this week. Uh, and really being able to find the fairway on your drive is important. Distance is just not. So uh, include fairways gained in your modeling. Around the greens, really important. These are small greens. Uh, so you have to be able to chip, get up and down here uh, often. And uh, it, it isn't all that easy of a course. So bogey <laughs> avoidance is going to be pretty critical. And so uh, I'm definitely looking at that. Greens and regulation, some par five scoring just a little bit, even though um, there's only the three par fives. You got to be able to score on those. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Um, definitely want to get in on the around the green play. Uh, is these are some of the shortest greens, and uh, you know opportunities gained is a stat on Fantasy National that uh, factors in anything within 20 feet from off the fringe or around the green. Yeah. Uh, you know, made made in or you know good approach to it uh, from those fit that vicinity as well as another thing that I factored into the model this week. All right, let's get into some of our favorite plays. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off with Daniel Berger here at 9,600, 18 to one. Didn't play his best golf last week at the Masters, but I think a lot of that weekend score had to deal with just not being in it. Um, yeah. And I hope, I hope that T to green number, because, you know, we don't have shot link data for the Masters. Um, you always have the tee to green numbers and he was pretty bad tee to green. I'm just hoping uh, Daniel Berger knew he was out of it. He was saving himself uh, for this week at the RBC where he has some good course history, uh, 13th in 2021, a third place in 2022, 33rd and a 72nd. So he just keeps on getting better. Um, 
each year. And he was first in approach in the model, third tee to green and fourth in ball striking. He's had some really, really solid ball striking numbers this year. Uh, really solid on the good drives gained uh, ninth, 10th in par threes from 175 to 200. This is, of course, with some long par threes and short par fours. I, I really like Berger in that um, correlation comp course uh, between Pebble Beach as well. Uh, winner of the Pebble Beach in 2020. His recent form other than the Masters, a 13th at the Players and a third at the fourth at the Honda. So uh, Berger, I think short Bermuda course. I, I don't see why you can't like Berger. Uh, your thoughts on him and uh, who's your favorite of the week? Yeah, when I uh, first ran the stat model this week, not including course history or a few other factors like uh, some windy conditions, things like that. Daniel Berger did pop as number one in my model. So I, I definitely love Berger this week. Uh, as far as DraftKings go and uh, overall as one of my favorite golfers, I am taking Colin Murakawa as my favorite this week. Uh, he had a great finish last week, fifth at the Masters. He came on strong on the final day. The chip in on 18 between him and Rory out of that sand trap, that was just absolute yeah. must-see TV, more so than the final putting hole for uh, Scotty Scheffler <laughs> and Cam yeah. Smith. But yeah, uh, Colin Murakawa, there's a lot to like this week uh, as well, besides just his play at the Masters. He, uh, looking at form in his last seven events, five of those, he finished top 10. He's absolutely helping to pay off the high price tag more often than he doesn't. He's number one in my modeling when it comes to shots gained in windy conditions. Uh, as always on this course, Seaside, we're going to see windy conditions sprout up. It looks like over the weekend, it might be at its worst. Um, course history he was seventh place here last year 2021 and then he was 64th place in 2020 i'm kind of taking the 2020 results with a grain of salt it was played later in the year right after the covid uh restart yeah. uh, so a lot of golfers really the field was completely stacked that year um, but mm -hmm. really everyone was kind of coming in cold you don't really know what golfers were doing with their time off that sort of thing. So I'm not really too concerned about the 64th, but I'm much happier with last year finishing seventh place. Um, but then when you're talking about this course, you need to be uh, absolutely excellent with your irons. Um, that's Colin Marikawa. Fairway finder, that's Colin Marikawa. Uh, he is third on approach in this field behind only Berger and uh, a guy I'll talk about a little later in the show here. And then he is ninth fairways gained, 11th greens in regulation. He doesn't make many bogeys. Uh, and he scores on par fives. So there's a lot to like here. The one knock on him, he is not great around the greens. And I did talk about it, you have to ha be pretty good, at least proficient or better. He doesn't check the box for that this week. But the biggest reason is why is because he's so elite with those irons. He doesn't actually have to chip very often. Um, so I'm not as concerned there. But that would be the one knock on Colin Marikawa going into this week. Yeah, that chip in he had on 18 made me a lot of one and done money. Went from uh, T eighth or T tenth or something like that to top five, so that was Big, a huge, huge, huge yeah. couple hundred, hundred, couple hundred thousand dollars swing in, in the one and done. And uh, I didn't even think of it at the time either. I was just so pumped about how cool that Rory scene was. So really, yeah. really awesome. Uh, I love Morikawa as well. Uh, moving on to the value slide here, I'm going to go ahead and talk up Webb Simpson at 8800. I thought that was fantastic value for a guy that has this course history here. Uh, Webb Simpson is a ninth in 2020. He won in 2000 or ninth in 2021, won in 2020, 16th in 2019, fifth in 2018, 11th in 2017. So essentially, since 2016, he's had a top 20 finish in each of the events with a win. So Webb Simpson, when it comes to course history on probably any course, this probably takes the cake. Uh, this is one of his smash courses, other than. Can, I believe it's um, Wyndham, Sedgefield. I think he has another is another one of those coastal Multiple courses on my uh, comp course list as well. So it's yeah. it's a type of course thing for Webb Simpson. Exactly thirty fifth, uh, thirty five to one. I see a lot of tickets out there already with Webb Simpson. We're getting uh, because of his injury status in two thousand and twenty one. He's only played four events, and um, you know. I think last week was a good indicator of where he's at a 48th at the Vals Park to get ready for the masters where he finished 35th, had a nice weekend. I think Webb is going to be a strong play at 8,800 for a very, very, very good course for him. Tom Hoagie at 7,600, 80 to one. It's not, it's worth a flyer. He won the 2022 Pebble beach uh, fourth in the model, just an elite 
uh, ball striker this year, seventh on the approach, 11th tee to green, 16th birdies or better, and fifth on the opportunities gain statistic. I really leaned heavily on the, the model this week for some of these golfers. And then you could see picks like Webb where it wasn't much of a model pick, you know, so it's just really on feel here. And uh, Tom Hoagie, I really like him with the way that he's playing. Hasn't missed a cut since the Genesis. And that was, uh, I think, back in February. So it's been a while for for Hoagie in a missed cut. 25th in last year's 2021. So give me the uh, give me Hollywood Hoagie. Your thoughts on these two and who your favorite value plays? Yeah, Hoagie's been playing some great golf. Um, something I'm kind of looking at more this week, more than usual, is between comp course and course history, putting those uh, much heavier in my model versus just the uh, – versus w- what I normally would, or recent form is really kind of taking the hit for me. If you look back, there's quite a few golfers who have come into this event in poor form, but great course fit, and then they've gone on to have great success here. Um, talk about uh, your, your – your um your sinks your uh, your web simpson from time to time here guys that not haven't necessarily popped in the weeks leading in and then have just an absolute uh, killer week here at rbc heritage i'm i'm waiting that a lot more this week so i i do like both of these guys quite a bit and that that goes to to poke for web um for me though value plays i'm going russell henley kind of as a more expensive value play but uh the model absolutely loves russell henley this week even better than some of the guys up in that 10K range um, as far as uh, just an overall model play. Uh, for me, though, the the biggest thing is the consist- consistency. He has not missed a cut uh, in his last 15 events. He d- plays really well on Bermuda grass greens. He also is very, very good in windy conditions. Um, the course history is pretty good as well. Ninth place last year, 2021. He was sixth place back in 2013. He's made uh, half of his cuts in the eight events that he's played here. Uh, the course, I'm sorry, the the biggest reason though, probably his elite approach. He is just so good with the irons right now. Second on approach in this field, again, behind Daniel Berger. He is 33rd around the greens, so he checks that box as well. Uh, fairway finder, 21st in this field. Also really good greens and regulation and par five scoring. So I think there's a whole lot to like here on Russell Henley. Um, overall, he was number one in my model the second time that I ran it with uh, course history and, and other conditions included in there. So I really, really like that pick this week. Uh, but down cheaper for me, Adam Hadwin. I like him a lot as well. He's only 7,600 on DraftKings. And that 60 to one outright bet, I would be willing to take a, a little shot there at 60 to one for Adam Hadwin. The, the thing for him, and I said it wasn't necessarily the most important, but the form, the form is excellent right now. He's got three straight yeah. top tens, and that was at the players, Valspar and Valero. Uh, he did not play at the Masters. He was 16th. If you look back at Pebble Beach, again, that's a comp course for us this week. He's been excellent tee to green recently, um, and he's had really good success on Pete Dye courses as well. So uh, he kind of checks all of those boxes there. He's twice been in the top 30 here. He hasn't had any like really good pops, but he's not been playing. Uh, recently, he's been playing much better golf than he has in past years. Um, his stat model for him, 30th on approach, 28th around the greens, 12th in fairways gained. Um, and then 10th in bogey avoidance. So he's kind of up near the top in a ton of the categories that I'm looking at. I like Adam Hadwin uh, really as a cash option, I think is an excellent uh, fit for your uh, tournament or for your cash book, for your cash lineups this week. Yeah, I was really scouting out that Russell Henley pick um, last weekend. He was in my best lineup and really came on strong on Sunday. He was on pace to shoot a really low number. Kind of stumbled a little bit at the end, but I think he had like four or five birdies in a row at one point, and he was really lighting it up for me and um, definitely going to enjoy playing Russell Henley this week. And, yeah, had one I thought was too cheap as well, 7,600. Um, usually, you know, guys that play the Masters come into RBC and have some good form, but, you know, there's only 90 guys that get to play the Masters. And Hadwin had a nice time off, and I'm sure he's ready as an RBC uh, guy, I, I believe he is, uh, RBC sponsored guy. So I could see some extra incentive for Hadwin this week. Sure. All right. Mo- moving into the sleeper slide, I'm going to go ahead with nasty Nate Lashley. Lashley, 6,700, 180 to one. He's in some good form, surprisingly. Uh, Lashley's not a guy that usually strings together, um, you know, 
really good finishes. 18th at the Valero, 15th at Corrales Punta Cana, 27th at the Valspar, and 7th at Puerto Rico. Uh, he's playing his way in, and he's getting some sponsors invites. I really like that form. Guy that definitely makes some bogeys, but he makes a ton of birdies. And when we're talking about DraftKings scoring, we want to get that guy that's going to be making a lot of birdies. I think Lashley, um, someone that really hit well from that par three, 175 to 200 mark, uh, 29th in the field, 16th in opportunities gained, and 56th in tee to green. But, you know, there's a lot of older rounds listed into that um, tee to green number. But I really like Lashley's recent form uh, for the way that he's been playing. Uh, now we have another former winner here. Go ahead and talk about the, the Panama. Yeah, uh, I do love me some CT Pan this week. He popped in the modeling for me. Uh, but yeah, he's a 2019 winner here at the RBC Heritage. The form's been pretty decent coming in too. He's made four out of his last five cuts. That includes ninth at the Genesis and 16th at the Honda. Some really good finishes for him. Uh, he checks the boxes on approach around the greens fairways gained and bogey avoidance as well this week he's top half the field in scrambling also uh, so really kind of a well-rounded golfer even if he isn't at the top of any of those categories and he did uh, again win in 2019 and he's made the cut four out of five trips here to harbor town um, really last year was his missed cut but he was he was terrible tee to green and that's just not his style he's normally much better tee to green than that uh, so I expect him to bounce back this week and uh, have a really good uh, opportunity to at 6300 not just to make the cut but uh, to push top 25 for your lineups I think he can really help you on DraftKings especially with that yeah. price yeah price tag's really nice on him 6300 um ct pan really good with the irons i i, I don't mind it and uh, we see a lot of former winners turn out to be cut makers here so um go ahead yeah let's let's get in with ct pan uh one and done slide to wrap it up this week uh, i'm gonna go ahead and go with your favorite value or one of russell henley uh he's gonna be my one and done pick here i have uh 478th place that's good for about 275 bucks in the big one and done uh five top fives and one win so i'm kind of looking for that next win uh it really propelled me up the leaderboard because i'm although i'm getting these nice top fives and top 20s i'm starting to slip because i'm not getting the wins so hopefully we can get back in the winner's circle uh tell me a little bit about what your situation is <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much whoever I pick uh, is is really, really has a, a tough week. Uh, last week I was on Brooks Kepka. He has just been smashing majors over the last couple of years, and uh, he ends up with a missed cut for my one-and-done selection. I'll go Webb Simpson here. I uh, hope I don't uh, curse him as one of your <laughs> top picks. But, uh, yeah, I think Webb is a great option in order to get yourself some uh, some cash this week. The winning upside is there for him on this course, and that doesn't happen. I don't see myself using him probably the rest of the year. Some of those other events you talked about, there's a couple other guys I think that uh, have good opportunities there, and I do not want to burn one of my uh, superstars here left this week. So uh, hopefully I can pull myself out of uh, the basement in our one-and-done competition this week with Webb Simpson. Yeah, hopefully. All right, John, that'll wrap things up. Any last final thoughts for the RBC Heritage? Uh, nope, a fun event. Uh, you're going to be missing out on uh, the Masters and the coverage and all the shots and uh, and the app, but uh, still a fun event, uh, difficult course here, um, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be a fun week. I'll get back into the PJ circle. Um, so, yeah, you can follow us on Twitter at TKNation47. That is at JohnPool19. And you can follow us on our Twitter handle at FSI underscore DFS. The uh, bio has a link to our Discord chat, and you can get all of the updated sheets, projections, and core lineups for anything that you guys uh, need for your to help build your PGA lineups. All right, guys, thank you. Have a good week, and enjoy the RBC Heritage. Sweet. Good luck.